Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Vision Church of Lockhart, Texas. Welcome visitors. Welcome those of you watching by streaming. Good morning and God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, it's good to be in the house of God today and uh, alive and well, free from sickness and health and disease and ready to proclaim the word and to hear the word and to receive the word. And we're just glad to be here today in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, if I may, turn your attention to the opening scripture for this morning. Let's see, where is it at? Philippians 4.13. And if you will, turn there and we'll read it together. Um, and I quote, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's a, a word of encouragement for everybody. Uh, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Just one catch. you got to make sure your will's lining up with God's will or it may not happen. That's been my personal experience. You know, you wonder why your will ain't, line, ain't happening. It's because it has to line up with God's will. And Amen. then things start, boom, 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 start falling into place. Um, okay, moving right along. It's time for praise and worship. Um, let us praise the Lord. I give you Vision Church praise and worship team. I'm not, I'm not forgetting anything. I'm not, I feel like I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that reminder there. You know, we all just human. I will make mistakes, I promise you. Uh, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you. We lay it all out for you. We come through your gates in thanksgiving. We come into your court with praise. And we just give you all the praise and the glory and the honor. And we thank you for all of it in Jesus' name. Thank you for being our daddy. Thank you for being our Father. Thank you for the countless miracles and blessings that you pour out on us daily. We thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. In Jesus' name.
lot to shout about. Things happening in this chaotic, uh, just corrupt world. We just need to be reminded that God continues to be faithful through all of it. We continue to see his sign, his signature, his handiwork. We just need to praise him for it. a beautiful name.
Thank you, Jesus. Testing. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day, Father God. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that we have, that you give us this opportunity to praise you and worship you this morning, Father God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you are so good. God is so good. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. God is good. All the time he is good. It's time for announcements. Amen. Uh, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. If you have these social media outlets, 
uh, help us ad advertise VCOL every Sunday and Wednesday. Uh, invite people, comment on what's on, uh, what's uh, going on C, uh, VCOL, and put your own uh, encouraging words out there. Amen. And uh, visit us online as well at vclockhart.com. Uh, Wednesday night Bible study, lessons from Elijah, and uh, that ought to be an awesome one. Amen. And uh, we have uh, classes for youth and children. Amen. Sunday's uh, English service is at 9 a.m. And Spanish service is at 11 a.m. Amen. Amen. Now comes the time for us to have the opportunity to, to give. Amen. When we, uh, when we become a uh, Christians, you know, most of us, uh, we've been Christians for a long time, and we, we know that God is good, and he's been good to us, amen? He's, he's uh, like the, the words, I was looking at the words at one of the songs there, his cup never runs dry, amen? Amen, it never, and uh, I know that some of you have, uh, can testify of that, and that, you know, he's never left us, nor forsake us, and, and uh, He's always been there for us, and he's always, uh, he may not be there at the time that we wanted to be there, but he's there on time, amen? He's always on time, right? Amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm just, I'm, I'm just so uh, grateful for all that he has done in my life and what he will do, and I'm sure you feel the same way because you know, he's doing great things, and, and at, the, at the same time, you know, we, we need to... Uh, we need to be obedient to him. We know now, you know, that we, we've been Christians for, for a long time, and it's, uh, it's automatic that we give. Amen. And it's a good feeling also when we give to others that don't have. It just brings a, a great feeling to us. And um, that's the way God wants us to be. Jesus wants to be. Be givers. Amen. Be givers of, uh, for people that, need, that are in need. Uh, I just want to read a little bit from uh, 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 Deuteronomy uh, 28, Blessings for Obedience. And it, uh, and it says in uh, verse 12, it says, The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouses of his bounty, to send rain out on our land and season and to bless all the work of your hands. Amen. That's kind of like Malachi 3, it's a, you know. Test him. Test and see huh, that he is good. We know that he is good. Amen. Amen. He will, uh, he will bless us in abundance. Amen. You know, all the work of our hands. I always, uh, in the mornings, I, I thank God for, for my health and everything. And we should do it as unto the Lord. We should do our work as unto him. Amen. Because he's the one that... that uh, that keeps us, you know, healthy, keeps us going. Amen. So we need to uh, work as unto him. Amen. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. Amen. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Amen. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord, your God, that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top and never at the bottom. Amen. Who wants to be up here? Amen. We want to be at the top. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today to the right or to the left. Let's not, let's not focus on other things that, that's not going to, you know, that's not going to help us or not going to help anybody else, you know. Let's look forward. Let's keep our hands on the on the plow, on the rain, amen, and just go forward, amen, just go forward, just go forward, amen, follow, uh, following other gods, I mean, it says here, I give you today the right or, or to the, to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them, let's not, 
Let's not serve other gods. Amen. Let's just serve him. Amen. Because he is good. He has been so good to us. Amen. You ready to give this morning? Amen. Okay. You can come up and bring your uh, tithe and offerings this morning. Amen. God is good. Lord, you are good. Okay, sister wants to say something. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, uh, brothers and sisters, I just want to say thank you so much for how you blessed me last week to help me get my battery for my car. I, I am so, so grateful. I, I don't have the words really to say how I feel, but it was such a blessing to me to my heart, to my soul, and God bless y'all back a hundredfold. Y'all were a big blessing to me, and thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. God is good. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this time we have with you, Father God, and we ask that you bless this uh, offering, Lord, and uh, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, Father God, that you give us the kingdom keys, Father God. And Lord, we just thank you that uh, we just love you and we thank you, Lord, because you are good and you do good things, Father. And Lord, we just uh, give you all the honor and all the glory, Father God, this morning. And Lord, and we just uh, say what you want to say this morning, Father God, in our message. And Lord, and... Uh, we just glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. You having a good time so far? It's awesome to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. God is so good to us. And uh, this morning I'm continuing on the Holy Spirit. There's so much to learn about the Holy Spirit. And, and, um, and so we're continuing on that this morning. Before we get started, I'm going to pray right quick. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for... For your presence in this place, Father. I thank you, Lord, for what, you, what you're doing in us and through us, Father, and, and in this body of Christ, Lord. So, Lord, right now, I just pray that you would open our eyes, open our ears, open our understanding, Lord, to receive what the Holy Spirit has for each and every one of us, Father. Lord, I put my, my less of me, Father, more of you. I put myself in your in your will, Father, you do what you want. This is your service, and we will honor you, Father, in all that you do and say, Father. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this message in the name of Jesus. Amen. And um, Brother Tony, I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> I missed you this morning at prayer. And there's a prayer that you always say you always end. And I want you to do that now for us because you, you bind and loose. Is, <laughs> but I want you to do it here before. The <laughs> there you go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We come before you with all the honor and the glory and the praise to you, Father God. At this time, Satan, I bind you up. According to the word of God that says, what I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. I bind you, I rebuke you, I cast you out in Jesus' name. You have no place here. 
And I loose the Holy Spirit according to the word yes, that says, what I loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Yes, we hallelujah. loose the Holy Spirit to have his way in this service. In the mighty name of Jesus, for your praise and glory. Amen and amen. Amen. I thought you, I thought you were going to say something else. The Lord was, was saying to you, and he's trying to catch a fly. That was good. Thank you, brother. All right, so we're going to continue talking about the Holy Spirit this morning. And I've titled my message, Let the Holy Spirit Guide You. Amen, because remember, he is our guide. Amen. That's what the Lord sent him to do for us. And uh, for, we're going to go right to Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. And we need to learn how to follow the Holy Spirit. Amen. It says, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Amen. That's pretty easy. Right? In the Greek, it's, it's a little bit different. In the Greek, it says, for as many as by the Spirit of God are being led, they are sons of God. So in the Greek, we see that the Holy Spirit comes before us. And that's the way the Holy Spirit should always be. He comes before us. We are his follower, followers. As children of God, we follow after the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? In the Greek, the word led describes an intense conflict, such as a struggle in a wrestling match or a struggle in the human wheel. Amen? When we decide to follow after the Holy Spirit, we're going to have a struggle. Amen? Because we might be willing to follow the Holy Spirit, but we're going to fight against the flesh that sometimes isn't very willing. It's going to fight. It's, it doesn't want to be led. We want to be the leaders. Amen? You remember uh, growing up, you used to play follow the leader, and you always wanted to be the leader because you didn't want to do what, the, what your brother or your sister was telling you you, you had to do. Amen? So this is what we are to do. We are to follow, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and um, let him lead us. And as we follow his leading and direction and guidance, he will lead us into what we need to do and what we need to accomplish for that day. I remember the first time that um, I was walking downtown uh, from work. I, w I went to take a break and I was going to walk downtown and, and I was walking down here Main Street and Y'all know a famous bar that's there, Lily's Bar. And I went past that, and I got to the corner. I was going, um, actually, there used to be a store named Kegler's, and I was going to go in there and just look around. And as I was walking at the corner, there was this guy sitting there um, just staring at, down at, at what he had in his hand. And he had a, a beer in a, in a brown paper bag, and he was sitting there, and he looked so depressed and I just walked right past him, and the Lord told me, go talk to that man, and I kept walking, and I said, uh, I looked back at him, and I said, I don't want to, <laughs> I kept walking, I'm, I'm going to go look around in the store, and he goes, go, I said, go talk to that man, I went, man, I stood there for a minute, and I looked back again, hoping he would be gone, <laughs> but he was still there, and I said, Lord, what am I going to say to him, I just walked back, he goes, just tell him I love him. I said, okay. So I went back, and, and I, I looked at the guy. He was looking down in his beer, and I said, sir, um, God says he loves you. And he goes, oh, okay, thank you. And then he looked down. He goes, wait a minute. Who told you? <laughs> I said, God told me to come tell you he loves you. God loves you, okay? Have a blessed day. Bye. <laughs> that's all he told me to say, and that's all I needed to say. I never know what happened to that man. When I, when I walked back around, he was gone. I don't know who he was. Didn't recognize him, but I did what the Lord told me to do. And sometimes we're going to struggle with that because we don't want to, you know. But we need, to, we need to fight our flesh, okay? We need to fight our flesh. And we were talking about, you know, what Brother Richard was talking about, being so blessed and and. I just wanted to share uh, a testimony. A couple of weeks ago, we had a couple visit us from uh, Reynosa. 
Mexico, it's a, it's a couple, they're pastors. Uh, the wife is the pastor, the husband, he's a worship leader. And they were coming from Oklahoma. She had been uh, ministering there. She was in a women's conference. And they were driving down past here, and, and they called us, and we went to lunch with them. And I really admire this this lady. She Her mom was a pastor, and she's a pastor. And, and she's real passionate, and she, you know, she's a little pistol. You know, I just love to hear her minister. She's so strong strong and so we were just visiting and and they were saying about the church that they opened they just opened a church in Reynosa and it was they opened during COVID in 2020 and she was they were just telling us how how they've been struggling and we were telling them how we've been watching them online and and their church has just grown tremendously you know people there are, are hungry for the word and and they're coming, and, and she goes, and, and we first it started in her home, and how they, they grew and grew, and finally found a place that they were, uh, you know, doing a lot of construction, and they were still, you know, had a lot of, to go, and they had struggled financially, and used up all their savings. Their story sounded familiar. <laughs> it, it sounded real familiar, you know. We've been there. So as we were eating, I felt the Lord tell me that we needed to give them an offering. And so I, I let that sit. And when we were done, I told my husband, that we were walking out, we were driving. I said, well, we need to give them an offering. And the Lord has, and he goes, well, what's the Lord telling you? I said, he's telling me to give him $1,000. And he goes, okay, fine. If we agree, you know, if there was a disagreement, we would probably have not done it. But... So we went back to my office, and I, I wrote them a check. They were visiting. They were looking at, you know, the place where we work, and they weren't paying attention. And, and we gave them the check, and, and the ladies just, she was astounded. She said, this is exactly what we need for two ACs in their building for their children's building a class. She goes, we have 40 children, and we have this classroom, and it has no AC. And, and he goes, we've got two ACs, and this is going to exactly cover what we need. And she said, well, well thank you for, for listening to the Holy Spirit, right? And my point is that um, later that afternoon, since I'm always checking on her account, and, and, and I gave him the check from the church account, okay, because I felt that's what the Lord was telling me to do. Well, I went to check the balance because I want to make sure I checked the balance. And, you know, we have Tithely where people can give online. We've never, ever have received $1,000 through Tithely. And we had $1,000 come through Tithely that day, that same day, before I even checked it. The Lord gave it right back. He, we had it right back. And the reason is because we... I feel we need, we need to, there's a saying that says, so where you want to go? <laughs> you know, they're, they're growing so quickly and the, the, the spirit of God is moving and we want to be part of that. Yes. We want that same anointing here. They're growing, their buildings are growing. We want that same here, you know, because it says wherever you sow and whatever you sow into is a seed and the Lord will give it back to you. And that you will have as well. We we are participating in the in what is going on in their ministry. Amen. But that's not the half of it. The other half is that, and I I get paid once a month. So I plan my check register. I put all my bills and and after my pet my paycheck, I was going to have thirty one dollars left. And I went, you know, I have it marked off because a lot of the, the bills are automatic draft. So I go check and see if they've been automatic drop. Well, everything had been paid, and I had I still had I had a thousand and thirty one instead of just thirty one dollars. And I said, wait a minute, I this is this is my spending plan. This is it. It hasn't changed. I added again. It hasn't changed. And I said, I'll leave it alone. But I had a thousand dollars extra. I don't try to explain that. I'm just saying that that's the way our God is. Amen. Amen. He will, and, and you might say, well, he just reimbursed you, but where's the hundredfold? 
when you look at the whole picture and you look at everything that the Lord has put you stored over, it, it should just amaze you of how good the Lord is and how much he's given you. And it's been more than a hundredfold. And I give all the, the glory to God. That's the way my God works. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's the way our God works. Hallelujah. And so it was just by following the leading of the Holy Spirit. Wanted to show something to us. Wanted to, to testify to what we've been talking about. Amen. God is so good. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit teaches us. Amen. John 14, 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Amen. He's going to teach us all things. The primary meaning of the word teach in the Greek is says to teach, inform, instruct, demonstrate, and prescribe. This word is used typically for the relationship between a teacher and a pupil, an instructor and an apprentice. Amen? So the Holy Spirit has taken the role of being a teacher. And that's what Jesus said, that he was going to send another comforter, another helper, another being just the same as he is, another just like Jesus to help us. So he's been sent to help us. Amen? Just like Jesus was a teacher to the disciples the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Amen. So he teaches us. We're his pupils. We're to learn from him. He's our instructor. We're his apprentices. Amen. And, and so we learn all kinds of things from the Holy Spirit as we, he, he gives us knowledge. Amen. As we read our, the scriptures, it, it gives us, um, we learn lessons from that. Amen. It's just uh, what we're doing on Wednesday night, lessons from Elijah. This past Wednesday night was just an introduction, and we learned so much just from the introduction. Amen? Because the, the, the Bible is there to instruct us and, and to show us. And you might say, that's an Old Testament, but what I was listening to was like what we're going through today. Amen. I won't give you more if you want to learn, come to the Wednesday night class. Amen? And he will teach us how how to live our Christian life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He will teach us and we will just by spending time in the word of God and just listening for his voice because the Holy Spirit is always talking to us and we just need to pay attention. Amen. We just need to listen, obey, and, and do what he has commanded us to do. Amen. The Holy Spirit will teach us because that's what, what God sent him to do. He sent him to be our helper, to be our teacher. Amen? And the teaching of the, uh, the Holy Spirit is a part of his ministry. It's just what he's been ministering to do. Amen? As we continue on this verse, John 14, 26, it says again, But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and... Bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. You know, he will remind you. Sometimes when you're ministering and you're thinking of, of things, he will remind you. Scripture will come up to you. You know, I tell you, I, I, I don't, you know, I know the scripture and where it is. And most of the time I know exactly where it is. But sometimes, you know, you just know the word, but you don't know. Like, Wait, I got to find it. But he will, the Holy Spirit will remind you. And in the word of God, if you look at the Gospels, uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, uh, John, and Luke, they, you can see how the Holy Spirit um, reminded them of all that they had been through. Amen? Because they, they followed Jesus for three and a half years, and he taught them. And they weren't writing everything down at the minute he was teaching them. They weren't taking down notes. These, these Gospels were written like 60 years or is it 66 A.D. or maybe even 40 years after Jesus had ascended into heaven. And so after, you know, do you remember what happened last year? <laughs> if, if it's not written down in history somewhere, I'm not going to remember it. But they, all four of them, had wrote the exact same things. They, if you read all four Gospels, it's all the same, um, the same stories, but with a different point of view, but it's the exact same story. 
Amen. They rem- they, it was so specific of what Jesus said to them and what he did. Amen. And they remembered and they all remembered him exactly. And I don't think they were all together the whole time writing it together because they, they were written in different years. And it had been years, but everything was written. And that word is there so that we can learn from it. Amen. And it's precise. And the word will speak to you. If you're reading, sometimes just, you know, in a quiet time, you're reading, you can, you're reading into that word and that word speaking back to you. Thank you, Lord. And remember in the word, it says that all scripture is inspired, it's an inspiration from God. Amen. So it's correct. And John 12, 13, here we see an example of um, the Holy Spirit reminding, reminding the disciples, right? And John 12 is where, where Jesus is, is coming into Jerusalem, and he's on the donkey, and, and on verse 13 it says, they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. This is a scripture from the Old Testament. Amen? At the time that this was happening, the disciples did not know that it, that they were living an Old Testament prophecy. They didn't have an, an idea. And it'll tell us here in John 12, we go down to verse 16. It says, His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him, that they had done these things to him. Amen? So when the when the, when the Holy Spirit came to them, then they put it together. Then they understood. When they were writing these, these, uh, the, the books, then they understood what was going on because it would, had been foretold in the Old Testament. Amen? It had been, in, if you look at Isaiah and, and in Psalms. Amen? So when they were at the day of Pentecost, when they were in the upper room and the Holy Spirit... Uh, came down upon them, then their eyes were open and they saw that what they had lived with Jesus was tying the Old Testament scriptures into all the events that they had experienced with him. Amen. But they, at the time, you know, sometimes because the, the, Jesus would be um, teaching them and, and they didn't understand. And sometimes, can you say it a little bit clear? Because I really don't understand. And he would talk to them in parables. Amen. But it, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they were enlightened. Remember when uh, they, they came out and, and they were all speaking in, native, in tongues of, of all the, there in Jerusalem. It was a city. Uh, it was um, commerce. And, and there were people there from all nations. And everybody had their own language, their own dialect. And, and the disciples came out speaking in their tongues and, and boldly, pro, boldly proclaim, proclaiming the Lord. Amen. The Holy Spirit will testify. Amen. The Holy Spirit has a testifying ministry. Go to John 15, 26. It says, But when the Helper comes, whom I send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he, speaking of the Holy Spirit, will testify of me. Amen? So without the Holy Spirit helping you, it's kind of hard to testify about Jesus. You need the power of the Holy Spirit working through you to testify about Jesus. He's our helper. He helps you to testify. The Holy Spirit loves talking about Jesus. He loves talking about how good he is. And you know, when, when, when you get into a conversation with, with another person and you start talking about Jesus and then, you know, just words come up in you. I know y'all experience that. You're talking to another person about Jesus. And the, a few weeks ago, I was talking to my niece and, and she's an awesome teenager. She's 18 years old. She loves the Lord. She serves the Lord. She, she's a worship leader. And we started talking about the Lord and and, and things were coming up on his, her spirit, and things were coming up, and I just didn't want to leave that, 
that, that moment. I just wanted to continue to talk, but it wasn't just me talking from my head. It was the Spirit of God just coming over us, and we were just, you know, just um, just throwing it back and forth because that's what this whole, the Spirit is. He loves to talk about Jesus, amen? And he wants to testify about Jesus. You know, sometimes, I, I don't know about y'all, but um, I'm not a real fan of being out, passing out tracks. It's just not my thing, right? And and so um, I think because, I, you know, it's just, you, you need a special calling for that. <laughs> but it makes a difference if if I don't have the power of the Holy Spirit working in me or if I, for me to stand there and have to hand somebody a track here, read this, read that, if I don't have the Spirit in me to testify about Jesus, does that make sense? You know, because we can get into works. You know, this is something we need to do. We need to go out and testify. And you go out testifying, handing out tracks or, or, or knocking on doors and telling the people your point of view of what the Bible says. But there's no power behind it. Then there's just words. Does that make sense? It's just words. You're not, you're not, there's nothing there but words. Amen? Amen. So he, the Holy Spirit has the testifying spirit ministry. In Acts 1.8, it says, but you shall receive power when, in, in the King James, it says, after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all the Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen. So it's after, even when Jesus went into his ministry, it was after he was baptized in the Holy Spirit that he started his ministry. So if Jesus needed the Holy Spirit to do his ministry, so do we. We need the power of the Holy Spirit working in us and through us. Amen. Supernatural power to witness and testify powerfully about our resurrected Christ. So without the Holy Spirit's assistance, it, it's almost impossible to testify because then we're just talking. We're not really testifying of what the Spirit is saying in us or through us. Amen? Amen? And a lot of us are really not really that bold to go out and testify. In John 20, this is, uh, we keep reading in John, in John 20 and verse 19, this kind of similar to, to where Christians are today. Amen? It says, then this... The same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled. Remember, this is after the Lord has been buried, amen, and, and, and all the Jews scattered because they were afraid. They were afraid if, if, if the Pharisees and the religious people found out that they were with Jesus, that they were in big trouble, and they were afraid they would be killed as well. And Remember? And it says... For fear of the Jews. So they were hiding for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. There's peace with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And instead of the disciples going out and teaching about and preaching about Jesus and all that they had been through, they were hiding out. And there's a lot of Christians like that today that say they're a Christian, but they, it, it, there's a saying that Brother Andrew says is there's not enough evidence to, to convict them of being a, a Christian. In other words, you know, they can't tell the difference. We're just like everybody else in the world. Amen? There's, there's, there's nothing to, to prove or to show that we are any different. And, and we don't want to share our faith because right now everybody... Um, Christians are under attack. You know, you say you're for, you're for the word. You're for the, the things that the word says. And, and you will, if you stand up for what the word says, you will be persecuted. You will be ridiculed. You will be talked about. And sometimes instead of, uh, uh, try, instead of going through all that, we'd just rather say nothing. And then that's the choice that we made, not to say nothing, not to testify of Jesus, and that we can't do that. Amen? Jesus did not give us a spirit of fear. We have a spirit of, of uh, power, a sound mind. Amen? And not a spirit of fear. So we need to testify 
The word testify in Greek means to witness or to give a good report. And if you study that word out, it also where we get the word martyr. And it's referring to someone who, ob who obtains a righteous testimony as a result of his willingness to accept suffering or death rather than renounce his faith in Jesus. Amen. We need to stand for what the word says so we won't be, so we can get out of where, where we're at. Amen. Courage comes from the supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. It empowers us as believers to testify about Jesus, regardless of the pressures and, and the bad reviews and the, and the Facebook, uh, whatever they put on there, lashing out at you and stuff. We need to stand and testify of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Holy Spirit has the ministry of convicting. Amen. John 16, 8, it says, And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. In the, in the King James, it says, Reprove. So, and when he comes, when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And here, reprove, in the Greek, the meaning of that is to expose, to convict, to, or to cross-examine for the purpose of conviction as in convicting a lawbreaker in a court of law. Amen? So here you can picture a court of law, right? And there's the judge and then there's the hot seat, right, where, you, where you're sitting or where, where let's say, the, the, the unbeliever, the sinner is sitting. It's usually on this side. Right? <laughs> They're sitting here and... Maybe the prosecutor or, you know, the defense, we would say the prosecutor. He's uh, sharing the gospel. Amen. He's sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's testifying. And this man, the unbeliever, the sinner is sitting here. And as, and as we testify of the goodness of God and his love, his mercy and what he did for us, um, the unbeliever or the sinner will start to get convicted amen he would start to feel a conviction right it's just like a criminal right they're telling them look all of this and and they're going like they're worried because yeah I've done all that I've sinned I've done all those wrongs and they're sitting there in this hot seat and then then the judge comes up and the, and and he says you're guilty amen that's how the Holy Spirit convicts us when we hear the word of God, when, when, when we're, we can see it, we can feel it. It, it goes out like a two-edged sword. His word is like a two-edged sword, a man that cuts through bone and marrow. It's sharp, and it, and it, and it kind of just stabs you, and it hits you, and then you realize, oh, my God, I did this crime. I'm the sinner. You know, and you've been exposed. You're sitting there, you're exposed, you're, you know, everything has, has come and, and you feel, I'm caught. And then the Holy Spirit convicts you and, and you come to Jesus because Jesus is there to take the punishment for you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Ephesians 4.18 here the Bible says that sin has made unbelievers to be hard-hearted, spiritually blind, and past their feelings. They have no feeling of, of sin or whatever. In Ephesians 4, 18 and 19, it says, Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. And here again, this is the Holy Spirit when it touches a human heart and that person wakes up to his true spiritual condition and he feels convicted because he's been exposed. In other words, he's naked before everyone and he's being confronted. 
And there's that person sitting in that judgment seat. Amen. In Romans 3.19, it says, Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. The Holy Spirit is there to convict us sinners of their lost condition. Amen. The whole world stands guilty before God. But the lost don't realize that they're guilty until the moment that the Holy Spirit reveals it to them. Once it's been revealed, then they come to the to the understanding of where they are in their in in themselves. Amen. John 6 44 says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Hallelujah. The drawing of a of a person's heart is done through the work of the Holy Spirit. And John 16, 8, if we go back to that verse, it says, And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Without the work of the Holy Spirit to, to show us our sinful nation, na nature, um, we would still be in darkness today. We would be lost and without God. You know that... that um, you can be in a church service, you can be in here, and you can probably hear preaching on, on you know, sin and, and things that, that, that keeps us away from the Lord. And, and we could sit here and agree, yeah, that's right, amen, yeah, that's true, yeah, you know, we're sinners, or not sinners anymore, but yeah, that's a sin, and we can agree with everything that's being preached, and, and then, and then we're, we walk out of here and nothing in us has changed. It's because our hearts are hardened. Our hearts get hard when there's no, no, when there's no conviction. Amen? And we sit here and, and with our hard heart and, and nothing changes. It, it's, and it takes the convicting of the Holy Spirit to, to bring that out in us. Amen? Y'all know my story. I spent 20 years in unforgiveness. I could not forgive. Those 20 years, I never stopped going to church. I never stopped serving. Actually, I served more than ever because I wanted to be on, on God's good side. I, wanted, I don't want him to be mad at me. I wanted him to love me. So I was working in church all the time and, and taking my kids and raising them there. But my heart was hard. Why? Because unforgiveness and sin. I was one of those Christians that if, if, if you would talk to me out there, there wasn't enough evidence to convict me of being a Christian because I couldn't say I was a Christian because I, wasn't, I felt like I wasn't good enough. I had to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. Amen? And so we come to church and our heart gets hard and the more unforgiveness, it creates uh, hate, it creates um, bitterness, and all those things keep you from entering the, the kingdom of God. You can't get into the kingdom of God with all that on your heart, with a hard heart, and, and your hard heart blinds you. Amen? Until one day, uh, an evangelist came, and he preached about unforgiveness and how we need to forgive and all that, and the, and the Holy Spirit convicted me. It was time. It was time to let go of that, you know, and, and it convicted me and it, it stabbed me <laughs> like a two-edged sword and cut my heart, amen, and let all that ugliness come out. <laughs> and then that's when the Holy Spirit started ministering to me. It started, I could hear it again because, you know, the Holy Spirit's talking all the time. Amen. He's talking to you. He's telling you things but we need to open our spiritual ears to hear him. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So we need to, to allow the Holy Spirit to convict us so that we can open our spiritual eyes and our spiritual hearing and our hearts and so we can be healed and back into a relationship with the Lord. Amen? Because all that will keep you from him. 
So the Holy Spirit has that convicting ministry. It also has a convincing ministry. Amen. It will convince you. In John 16, 8 to 11, again, we've already read 8. We read it again. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, right? Doesn't that? And of righteousness and of judgment, of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because I go to the Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. Amen? I struggled with condemnation. Amen. I felt condemned all the time because I felt I had to be perfect. That I needed, um, I didn't understand righteousness. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes and he convinces you. Because he, he has a, a convincing ministry. Amen. I didn't understand that I was righteous, not because of what I did, but because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for me, for his shed blood for me. Amen. I felt like I had to prove that I was worthy of being loved, and that's where all the works comes in. You can be working and doing all the right things and saying all the right things, but if your heart is hard and, and, and you have not allowed the Holy Spirit to, to lead you and direct you, you're just this lost. Amen. But one day, the Holy Spirit started dealing with me. And that was the day that, that, he, that he convicted me of where I was. And now, he, and now I needed convincing to who I was. Amen? And, and that takes time because sometimes you have to get all the, the religious beliefs out of your system. Um, there's a pastor that I follow, and he says, the, and then it says in the word in Matthew 19, 13, I think it is, or 13, 19 backwards, that you have to root out all the trees, and that's belief systems in you. Amen? So I had to root out all this belief system that I had that, the, that God didn't love me that, that because I, was, I wasn't doing everything that a Christian should do. You know, I couldn't say I'm Christian because... That's a lie because I'm bad. You know, all these things that the enemy tells you. Amen. So I needed convincing and the Holy Spirit will convince you. And it took some convincing, a lot of convincing, because in my carnal mind, I didn't understand. And we can go to uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21. The Holy Spirit will cross-examine us just like he cross-examined the, the unbeliever in that, in that courtroom seat, amen? I hope you were, I hope you can imagine that. When I say that, I, I, I try to plant you a picture so you see a courtroom. See it in your mind. Use your imagination, amen? And he's being convicted. He's being, you know, you, you're a sinner, you're this, you're that, right? And then the judge says, guilty. <laughs> but then Jesus comes and, and, and he pays the price for you. And so now we need to be cross-examined as believers to be convinced of our righteousness. And that's, that's where, where I was. I struggled with that because that wasn't something that was deeply rooted in my heart. It's deeply rooted now. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But it, in 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Amen. I believe every word that's in the Bible. Amen. And we have to be really convinced of that. Do you believe the word of God or don't you? Because we'll believe what's convenient, but we won't believe all of it. And you have to make up your mind. This is the truth. The only truth. The word of God is the only truth. Other things are opinions and points of view. But the word of God is truth. So if the Bible I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It was hard to me. It was hard for, for me to understand because I was in the flesh. But when you get in the spirit and you understand these things, I couldn't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't comprehend it and I couldn't accept it because it went against the wrong belief that I had in my heart. But once I believed it, it became natural. Amen. 
Thank you, Lord. You are so good, Father. So when we find out that we are righteousness, not because of our own doing, but with for what Jesus did for us, then that's an awesome, that's an awesome feeling. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And and then after you convince yourself of your righteousness, the Holy Spirit is convincing you. It took a lot of convincing. It took a lot of years, but I got there. Amen. And I thank the Lord for that. And then your whole world changes. Amen. You come and the Lord can work through you, in you, and around you. Amen. So we go back here to our scripture, number, uh, John 16 and verse 11, which says, Okay, let's go to 10, where it drops off, off of righteousness. And because I go to the Father and you see me no more of judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. Here, Jesus says that the ruler of this world has been judged. This is, this is a picture of Satan and, and the culture that we live in and the systems that we live under. Um, I don't know if any of y'all know what the seven mountains of influence are. There are seven points of influence in this world. And, and, it's, and there's a, a great teaching out there about the, the influences. And those, um, those systems in this, in this world is religion, family, education, government, media, arts and craft, and business. Those are the systems that work in this world. Amen? Religion, and, and that's where the enemy is attacking us right now. Because if you look at all those systems, because those are all the systems that influence the world. Religion, I, I think back in... Uh, you know, like my mom says, she goes, old-time religion, <laughs> you know, and, and um, you know, things were different in church. We, you know, we, they were preaching the word of God, I mean, the, the, to get people saved, and, and it seemed like there was more respect, there was more morality, there was more integrity, and we've kind of gotten away from that. Of course, we're not religious, but it's the, relig the religion system. Amen? And now we see that there's, uh, I don't have anything against, you know, the mega churches and stuff, but a lot of people go to those places because um, they don't want to be part of a family. They just want to go in and get what they need. They don't want to be committed to a place. They don't want to be committed to doing anything and they just want to get, you know, check their, you know, I went to church on Sunday. That's what I'm supposed to do. I got my feel good. I got my pat in the back. And I'm done and we're gone. And, and I think the enemies worked in, in our churches so much that we've gotten away from what we're there about. A lot of places are considered social halls more than they're considered churches. Because they, they will see, are you really a church? Are you really preaching the word? Or are you just there to socialize? Because they will, um, that's one of the questions that, that, you know, they, that the government really scrutinize you on. Because some places are just getting a religious credit and they're not really teaching anything about the word of God. Amen. In our family, you see a lot of families broken. Amen. We, feed, we see what the word says, that the, the daughters against the mothers and the sons against the fathers and, you know, daughter-in-laws against the mother-in-laws. Don't like your mother-in-law. <laughs> Those kind of things. You know, the enemies come into, into our families. And more so, like right now, everything, you know, I think, I think it's more about politics now because we're waking it up to find out that, you know, if we're followers of Christ, then we have a calling to be in politics. Because remember, the, the word says that, that the nations are, are on his shoulders. On whose shoulders? 
on Jesus' shoulders, right? And who, who's the body of Christ? We are. So we have a responsibility since we live on this world, world to be involved, amen? To be awakened to what's going on in our government and in, 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 our, in everything. And, and we're seeing that um, these issues have brought problems to our families, amen? Because we don't all see eye to eye. And if you love your family, then it doesn't matter what they believe, you know, unless they're ungodly then you want to try to save them from the Lord. But if they have their own opinion, well, that's fine. We love each other, and we all have opinion, but we need to put, we need to put our opinions to work. Amen? We see education system with the enemies hard after our children, with the little ones, indoctrinating them to, to have a confused mind of if they're a boy or a girl or whatever. And they're teaching this in in kindergarten in, in elementary schools. Amen? Government, well, we know that's going crazy, you know? We've always known that there's corruption in the government, but we've never seen as much corruption as we're seeing today. In media, you know, now when you see the news, it's not really news. It's what they want you to believe. It's not facts. It's what they want you to believe. In arts and entertainment, you know, you could see, you could watch, um, you know, your kids could watch the cartoons, but now you have to watch the cartoons to make sure they're clean because they're not. And then now you have Disney making all their their movies um, to go with the all those letters agenda, <laughs> LBT, whatever, they've got a million letters. But what, what entertainment, is, what is, you know, What's in that? They're, they're, they're showing you what they want. They're, and then the businesses, amen? These are all the places that are ruling our world system today. And if we're not part of that world, of those systems, and how are we going to fight to to keep morality, to keep integrity, to keep honesty, amen? So that there's a future for our grandkids. And this is a system where Satan is attacking us. You know, that's why, uh, you know, we need um, all these people have leaders that are super wealthy, you know. And in churches, you can't talk about wealth because somebody will get offended. Amen. But we need people to be in charge of some of these uh, systems in the world. And some of them take money and you need to, you know, to, to get good news, to get, you know, good movies out, you know. There's Christian stations that, you know, maybe we should support that'll, that do show nice, clean movies, you know, and not an, not an agenda. It's not their agenda. It's just a movie, you know. But Lord, help us. But here in verse 11, it says that he's been judged, right? Because we're, we're not fighting against people. We're fighting against the principalities, the powers and dominion and might, amen, a Satan that's in the air. But this is the, this is, Satan is only temporarily operating these systems. Amen? You agree with me? Amen. It's temporary because here Jesus says that he's been judged. Amen? Amen. So to me, I tell you, if, if, if you see everything that's going on in the world today, all the chaos and everything that's going on, don't be afraid. Go to the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to remind you. The Lord says that he's been judged. We know what happens to Satan, right? So everything that we're going through here is just temporary. It might seem like the enemy is winning, but he's not winning. He's not going to win. You know, if you read Revelation, you'll know that we win. You're, in, you're still on the winning side. Amen. You still have victory. Hallelujah. Because he's been defeated and it's only temporary. Amen. Amen. Everything around us is not going to is temporary. It's not going to last very long. One of the, Jesus said that uh, Satan is completely and utterly defeated. Through his death and cross and resurrection, he's been defeated. Amen. 
And now it's only a matter of time till we see him coming through the clouds from the east, right? <laughs> and everything's going to change then. Thank you, Lord. So don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Don't be despaired, anxious, or afraid. You know, just ask the Holy Spirit and that he, the Holy Spirit will remind you that this is temporary and the enemy has been defeated and he's been judged. Amen? The Holy Spirit has a guiding ministry in, in John 16 and verse 13. It says, However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you all things to come. Wouldn't you want to know what's coming? <laughs> the Holy Spirit desires to guide you in every aspect of your life. Amen? He will, he will lead you. He will offer you sound guidance in every area of your life, every area of your life, amen? If you listen to his voice, he will tell you what career track to take. He will tell you who to marry. He will lead you, right? He will lead you to people, and he will lead you away from people, amen? He will guide you. He wants to guide you in every area of your life. And you just need to trust him and, and listen to him and, and obey him. Remember, we're following him. We're letting him lead us. We're letting him guide us because he's, he's Jesus living in you. Jesus is in you, guiding you. And they, he wants to guide you. He wants you, you know, he wants everything to work out for you. If you have a question, a problem, or a difficulty or something, Jesus has the answer. He has the answer. You need knowledge. You need wisdom. You need to know what to do in this area or that area. Pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you and give you the answers that you need, and he'll give them to you. Amen? Amen? Amen. But you have to obey him and lead him because then, you know, you said, I prayed, but then the Lord told you to do something, and you didn't do it, and then you're wondering, what happened? And the Lord, the, they're still waiting for you to do what the last thing he told you to do before you can move on. Amen? So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for leading us and warning us. We need to listen and follow, and then we'll be right back like in the book of Acts. They would listen to the Holy Spirit, and then they followed and, and took action. Amen? So today, I'm asking you to, to open your heart to the guiding ministry of the Holy Spirit. And to, um, to want that in your life, to, to trust the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you and direct you because he's not going to lead you wrong. And he's going to tell you of things to come. Amen. You want to know about your future. You might, he might not tell you exactly. He, you might say, Lord, I'm ready to give up. I, I want out of this business. And he'll tell you, wait a minute, not yet. Yes, Father. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Yes, Holy Spirit. I'll wait. Until you tell me I can move, I'll move. Amen? Amen. Y'all receive that? Yes. Did, you, did you get something out of it this morning? Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Because we have an awesome God to send us an awesome Holy Spirit to lead us and direct us. So trust in Him. Amen? If anyone's here that has never received the Lord as their Lord and Savior, you want the Holy Spirit. You want the Holy Spirit to guide you, to direct you, to lead you. You want, you want to have a, a friend like that that, could, that can lead you. You can have it all. But first, to get to that, you have to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, today's a good day to do that. Amen? Yes. And then the Holy Spirit will follow. Amen? Because you have to receive Jesus Christ first and foremost, and then the Holy Spirit will come. Amen? Amen. So if you want to receive, I think everybody in here is saved, but for anybody watching this online, um, I encourage you to trust in the Holy Spirit, and I encourage you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, because we're coming into a time in history where we're going to need the Lord. Amen? We need him more every day than we did yesterday. 
And we need the Holy Spirit to lead us and direct us, but we must accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And all you have to do is pray and ask the Holy Spirit, ask uh, the Lord into your life, and he will do it. I will lead you in a prayer, and all you have to do is pray with me. It says, Heavenly Father, I come before you because I realize the type of person I am. I, I, I feel the Holy Spirit convicting me of, of the sinner that I am, and, and I don't want to live my life like this. I want to live in your presence, Lord. I want the Holy Spirit to live in me and to guide me and to direct me. So today, I confess with my mouth that I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ went to the cross for me, that he died on the cross for me and was buried and resurrected on the third day. Father, I accept you now as my Lord and Savior. Come into me, Lord, and, and save me now. Take my life and do something with it, Father. It's my desires, my heart desire. And I receive you as my Lord and Savior, Savior, and I thank you for saving me. And Father, and while we're praying, I ask for the Holy Spirit to come into me now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I receive your Holy Spirit that's coming to me because your word says that you will not refuse anything that we ask as children. And I believe that as I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, that I am your child. And now I believe I received the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to guide me and direct me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed with me, we believe that you've been saved and we want to be the first ones to welcome you into the, into the family of Christ. And if you will send us an email or get in contact with us in some way, we want to send you a book that will give you more information about what you've done this morning. And we just thank you for being with us today. Thank you for uh, tuning in and, and listening. And welcome to the family of Christ. Everyone here this morning, thank you for being here this morning. May God bless you and all this week and that everything that you touch prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for being with me and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Lord.